The launch of a new mid-engine Ferrari super sports car tends to be a bit of a big deal, and they're around for a very long time. The 308, 328, 14 years. The 348, 355, 10 years. The 360 and F430 after that, another 10 years. And more recently, the 458, the 488, and the F8 Tributo, they'll be around for 13 years. So you better get used to this, the Ferrari 296 GTB, and it might just be the biggest leap forward of any of them. This left-hand drive example is the very first car in Australia, resplendent in Rosso Imola paintwork. And it's a blend of the old and the new. At first glance, it looks like a junior SF90. But look a little closer, and you'll see influences of the 1963 250LM. Before we dive into the nuts and bolts of the thing, let's have a little walk around of the design of the Ferrari 296 GTB. It's got this duck build front, which we're going to get very used to, with a super wide effect of the front intake down there. Ferrari has done a lot of clever stuff with this car. And they've made the complicated look very simple. So it's not festooned with spoilers or wings or anything like that. And it's a very elegant shape. These are radiator cooling ducts at the outside. And here is a duct that feeds the brakes to channel cool air into the brakes. The arches, you'll notice, are very voluptuous. The guards are very voluptuous and curved. And there's a lovely effect where the top of the guard is right over the centre line of the wheel, front and rear. Frank Stephenson, former Ferrari designer, uh, pointed out something about these mirrors, that you've got the body colour on top and black on the footing here. And if that was just reversed around the other way, that mirror would virtually disappear, wouldn't it, if that was dark and that was body coloured? But uh, you've got this very, very sculpted side. The big intakes here that are reminiscent of the old 250 LM. And also you have this, which is unusual for a mid-engine Ferrari. We've seen it on the SF90, we've seen it on the LaFerrari. But you've got this black A pillar and it creates this magnificent fighter canopy look to the car. It's a really interesting touch. Moving back, this is the fuel filler. And on the other side, you have your plug-in charger. And this section here is very interesting. Um, again, it was, it was referenced to the 250. But to me, it looks more like Ferrari 512BB. And with that little spoiler there and the sharply angled rear window. And you can't have enough Ferrari 512BB influences on a car. And you've got this very, very flat rear deck and the abruptly chopped off cam tail there. Or if you're Italian, the Coda Tronca. Moving around to the back, this is a little bit controversial, aren't they? Well, how, I don't know what you think about this, but uh, most people like to see round lights on a Ferrari. Um, the Roma has gone away from that. The SF90 had the little squircles. I personally don't mind these at all. I think they're pretty cool looking things. And again, this is unusual. There's no round exhaust, but uh, it's certainly distinctive. And in here, we have a pop-up spoiler. But the look is really, really muscular and clean. I think it just works. We'll just walk you through three really clever little aero tricks that this car has. The first one is this rear spoiler that pops up here at speed. And it marks a different philosophy for Ferrari from 458 Speciali onwards. The active aero was all about reducing drag at speed. This one is about increasing downforce. So when this thing pops up, you're getting 360 kilos of downforce at 250 k's an hour over the rear. If we move forward here, you've got this, uh, this delightful shape here, which is Ferrari claims is another 250 motif, but it just frames the rear of the car and it helps smooth the airflow from that chopped off rear window. It creates a virtual raked screen at the back and really, really feeds air smoothly into these intakes here. Now, if we move to the front, there's something that we've probably seen on single seaters before, but has never been seen on a Ferrari mid-engine car. And that's this underbody structure here, the tea tray, they call it. Um, creates a high pressure zone there, which then tumbles off and merges with a low pressure zone just under the car to create an ultra low pressure vortex that runs back and sucks the front axle down onto the road. Really clever stuff. 
These are the standard wheels for the 296 GTB, twin spoke design with the curved element that works by pulling air out of the wheel arch to create low pressure within the wheel arch. There's also a forged diamond cut version of this wheel, or if you're really keen, there's a carbon fiber wheel option that takes eight kilograms out of each corner. The brakes of this car are interesting because they utilize the development of the SF90's aero system. So air comes in at the front and is channeled down and cools the caliper and keep your brake temperatures really nice and low. The biggest difference with the 296 GTB compared to its predecessors is that it is now a plug-in hybrid and the V8 has gone. In its place is a V6 and I know some of you will be thinking, I need a V8, I want that sound. I don't want a V6, a V6 has odd primary balance because it's two banks of three cylinder, but Ferrari's done some very, very clever things with this engine. They fitted a counter rotating shaft to smoothen it out and look, just come in here and look how low this engine sits. That's because it's at 120 degrees, the V. Most V6 engines are 60 degrees. You get some odd rubbish American ones that are 90 degrees. That's just a V8 with two cylinders chopped off. They're dreadful. This one sits super wide. And the reason for that is so they can position the engine low. They can sit the turbochargers in the middle. And the 120 degree angle means that each pair of cylinders sh shares crank pins. And if you do that, you can have a shorter crankshaft, shorter crankshaft, shorter engine, shorter exhaust. It's a virtuous circle. Most Ferrari engines, you look in there and there's crackle red plenums. That's not the case here because this is a 120 degree V6. And so the plenums are over on the side and they're mounted with the throttle valve in lightweight plastic. So that helps keep weight low. Instead, you're seeing turbochargers. Twin IHI turbochargers that spin up to 180,000 RPM and they offer 11% less rotating inertia than the old 3.9 litre installation. So you have this engine mounted super low and super far forward in the car. Between the engine and the eight-speed transmission, which is shared with the SF90 and the Roma, you have an axial flux electric motor. And below the floor of the car, you have a set of batteries good for 7.45 kilowatt hours. Some numbers, the engine alone generates 487 kilowatts. When that's paired with the electric motor as well, the system output is 611 kilowatts at 8,000 RPM. Torque 740 Newton meters at 6,250 RPM. And Ferrari is claiming a new specific power output record for a production car of 163 kilowatts per liter. So if you have a short engine, a short exhaust, a short crank, and a compact electric motor, you can then package all that into a short wheelbase. This wheelbase here on this car is 2,600 millimetres and it's down from the 2,650 millimetres of the prior 458, 488 F8 Tributo family and the SF90 for that matter. It's also shorter than McLaren Artura and even Lamborghini Huracan, which is a very, very small car. So Ferrari have got the wheelbase really short, keeping the car manoeuvrable and stressing that fun to drive character. The performance of the 296 GTB is, as you might expect, ridiculous. They quote a maximum speed of over 330 kilometers an hour, 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds. And remember, this is rear wheel drive. 0 to 200 is in 7.3 seconds. And let's put that into perspective. A Ferrari Enzo does it in 10.3. An 812 Superfast does it in 7.9. And an F8 Tributo in 7.7. .7. So it's much quicker than all of those. And that translates into a blistering Fiorano lap time, one minute, 21 seconds. So it's closer to a LaFerrari around Fiorano than it is to an F8 Tributo. Crazy. Of course, one of the other benefits of fitting a V6 instead of a V8 is this 2992cc engine weighs a lot less than the old V8. It's 30 kilos lighter. And that contributes to an all-up weight of 1470 kilos and a power to weight ratio of 415 kilowatts per tonne. That is a lot. A McLaren 720S is good for 374 kilowatts per tonne. So this is going to be blindingly rapid. So let's have a jump inside and see what they've done in here. Ferrari has broken with tradition a little bit with this car. It's adopted some of the uh, architecture of the SF90. And whereas the old F8 Tributo felt a bit busy, a bit bitsy, this is a whole lot cleaner. I particularly like this curved screen. That's similar to the Roma. The Manatino dial on the steering wheel is present and correct and switches through wet, sport, 
race CT off where you've still got side slip control to help you. And if you hold it all the way over, it goes into ESC off. So you need the brave peels for that. Even more interesting perhaps is this virtual Manatino over this side. You can start in electric drive. That gives you 25 kilometers of range at up to 135 kilometers an hour. That is perfect for getting out of the garage on an early morning without waking the neighbors. Hybrid is the default mode that it starts in. Um, most of your driving will probably be done in sport. And if you're really keen, you can switch it into qualifying and that just absolutely drains the battery and gives you the fastest lap time. The quality in here is really, really nice. Um, nice carbon fiber, decent stitching. This one's finished with the optional passenger display and carbon fiber bucket seats. And it's even reasonably practical. I'm 6'4 and uh, I fit in here pretty well. There's cup holders. There's a space here for the key. You're not going to mistake what you're driving there. And there's space behind the seats for squashy bags in the net. There's even a decent sized frunk up front. Because it's solely a rear wheel drive car, the 296 GTB doesn't have to package front motors like the SF90. And that gives you a really deep and practical front boot. And there's no heat soak either from the electric motors there. So that's the 296 GTB. Ferrari is at pains to stress that it's not a like for like replacement for the F8 Tributo. This is a more expensive car with typical options. In Victoria, this would be high 600s. And that gives Ferrari an opportunity. At a later date, it can slot another model in beneath this one. So like and subscribe to Moda and we'll keep you fully appraised of all the latest Ferrari details. Cheers.